People jump into this with all kinds of confidence, like, oh, I can do it, you know, yeah, and start cutting things up and moving things around. Do you know how much work it was to get it to be that well balanced as a vehicle? I mean, we explored everything. Complicated surfaces scare production people. They're like, oh, no, we're not going to back that up. Because if we have a problem, yeah, well, if you do it one of a kind. By that time, I had already designed this race livery. I actually had presented it to the people from Exalta as a concept, and I showed them several signature cars that I've done in the past. But it's right here, they're stuck, right? Yeah, because you have a diagonal going uphill with a horizontal, so it forms an X. And if it's the 7, the 7 will just waterfall. This type of client, they like to see what it looks like finished. I do a photorealistic image from the computer that makes it look like the vehicle's already finished. You know, they look at it, they get a solid idea of where their money's going and a very good idea of what we're gonna do with their personal GT. This is an extremely expensive canvas. The guys are very attached to it. There's usually no heavy engine work deeper than, than the supercharger or the cam co covers, primarily aesthetic, but you do get an extra 100 horsepower plus the performance exhaust. You may creep it up another bit. A lot of times they keep throwing more stuff in it because they get excited through the process. We have had some of them go from a supercharger to twin turbo and the twin turbo um, is, is a serious modification and the car can go from 550 to 1,000 horsepower, 1,200 horsepower, you know, for the guys that need everything. The car went to Road Atlanta completely all white. I started taping it up. We have to tape it to put the, the design on it. That's how it basically comes together. My buddies, you know, Rich Brooks, Dan from GTG, they started taking the vehicle apart. We're talking about a serious staff of designers that have a lot of background experience and many successful vehicles. And I find it quite humorous when somebody just jumps into this thing without any kind of background like that. And they think that they're just gonna like improve the vehicle. Well, I'm more than happy to see how that would turn out and maybe I can learn something. My friends and I, Rich Brooks from the GTG, we thought it would be a great idea to do some GTs that I could introduce things that I've always wanted to do with the Ford GT that never made it from the concept car to production in other areas that we didn't get to explore as well. So when we started working on these vehicles, it was a lot of fun because there was a lot of room to grow colors to experiment, personalities of the vehicle that never had the opportunity to exist. So it's an exciting project every time to do something special with a Ford GT that makes it one of a kind and it's almost like an experiment of what if we could do this? Why don't we try this? Why don't we try these colors together that we never had together? If you really could do whatever you wanted, what would you do? I'd be more than happy to address that. And if you go into that without having the right training and the exposure to the vehicle and the understanding of the surface development and how it all works together, you could really screw the car up. And I've seen it done already.